Turns out the climate activist famous for shutting down highways and wreaking havoc on commuters might be hurting the environment far more than just people going about their every day on the road. You can hear the shrieking. The video of Nevada tribal police blasting through a climate activist roadblock appeared to offer a unique satisfaction that comes with frontier justice, swift justice. But in that video, we missed something. The activists, the climate activists, backed up traffic for miles. Hundreds of cars and trucks and buses sat idling in the hot sun, burning fossil fuels and blasting air conditioning. It's the same thing that happens when climate protesters shut down highways in America's biggest cities. The stop traffic spews fog. In addition, it tends to inconvenience the people most affected by climate change. Working class Americans get the short of the stick. They always do. They miss work and doctor's appointments. Of course, the Davos crowd still gets to fly their private jets around the world. And Yes, yes, protesters did spray paint a few yachts this summer in the Mediterranean, but let's be honest, that got washed off while their guests dined in Saint-Tropez. Nobody missed a dinner reservation. Bachanger Sargon is your opinion editor at Newsweek. Uh, you know, they, they always equate climate justice and social justice. It appears as though the social justice can take a back seat, I guess. Yeah, just like you said, Leland, the majority of climate activism targets the multiracial working class. There was another video that went viral of a climate protest that was blocking a road in which you saw an Asian man, a black man, and a white working class woman, and they were all screaming at the protesters, I need to get to work, I need to feed my family with the kind of panic that these upper middle class protesters would never feel. But this time, I have to say I chuckled a little bit because it was the first time I had seen climate activism that was, you know, elite on elite violence, right? You had these white upper middle class climate activists blocking the road to Burning Man, a place where white upper middle class activists go, some of them flying in on private jets. But of course, here they were targeting the people who had flown in and were driving in. Um, so, you know, a little, it was a little bit of, a, of, of, of joy watching this go down. Yeah, and they seem to feel as though they are totally immune from any type of of action. You can tell that because of how much they shrieked when everybody, <laughs> when the, the Nevada Rangers blasted through their protests. I, I guess this would be my question, is it would be easy if you really wanted to make a point about climate change. We know private jets spew out way more emissions than, than your average car or highway does. Look, there's a lot of, you know, you could go to Augusta, Georgia during the Masters, or you could go to where the Super Bowl is on Sunday and block block the runways where private jets land and say, look, we're willing to get arrested, we're willing to get charged with federal crimes over making this point of the people who are by far the worst offenders when it comes to climate, uh, if you believe that CO2 causes the earth to warm on and on, but they do. Why don't you think they go that route? That is the best question, and the answer is, is because these upper middle class credentialed white progressives have class solidarity with the billionaires, right? They don't want to target those people because they are on the same side of this issue. Of course, we know that it is the billionaires, Bezos, Bloomberg, who are funding the vast majority of the climate activism, and so they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them and demand that these people oh. stop flying around in private jets. They're going to go for the working class and demand that they not drive their cars. It's kind of funny, this sign there says, I think, abolish capitalism. So <laughs> you wonder where they get their money. <laughs> well, you make a great point. Like, and then look, it's, all, it's always true. Just follow the money. It, it shows you where you're going. Look, I got only a few seconds. But you spent, you've traveled the country talking to uh, working class folks of all races um, about, about how they feel. If we gotten to, and a friend of mine mentioned this today, are we getting to the point of they're willing to put sort of the, the culture war issues to the side and... If there was a candidate who was really willing to fight the income inequality issue, vote solely on that issue? 
the working class is not polarized. They don't even recognize these cultural differences because they have to work with people who they disagree with on guns and abortion. It would never occur to them to hate somebody based on their opinions. That's what we in the elites do because we make money off of doing it and we get power out of it. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.